welcome to Cooper High School for the season opener for the Hawks boys basketball team as tonight they play host to the Hiawatha Collegiate Wolves. Here they have had three games so far this season. Hi, I'm Jay Wilcox along with Ariel McDonald and a lot of new faces really kind of for both teams. Cooper, one returning starter, not too much varsity experience, but they're eager to see what things look like here this season. You know, Jay, for Coach Powell, you know, just another opportunity to grow his program. Ideally, you have returning starters that come in, and then when you return to the season, you feel a degree of comfort. But for Cooper, Coach Powell, trying to see what he has, Chance being one of the returning players, but also an opportunity to see where your young players are going to be at. Yeah, Hiawatha Collegiate's been around uh, the program for about six years. They came over here last year and played a very competitive game, lost by six to Cooper, and and uh, they've, they've gone two and one to start. They said they learned some lessons at St. Cloud Tech, kind of got, got blown out, but bounced back with a good win after that. So they're looking to kind of keep it rolling a little bit. You know, Coach uh, Conley and Coach Lewis, they've been growing this program, and so they've had, and so they've had some good results. But now with players who have left, they had an excellent team full of ex uh, players who are veteran players. But now with the returning team, looking just like uh, Cooper, trying to see what their young players can do early season right now, early opportunities for players. to have the opportunity to showcase their talent. So we'll see what happens tonight. Let's talk key players to look for in tonight's game, starting with Hiawatha, a guy that you know pretty well, and he's yeah. had a great start to the year, Cam Solomon. Cam Solomon, he was a player of mine. I coached over at Grassroot Sizzle, played for me this summer. Excellent talent, all right? Tremendous shooter, plays with pace, athletic. He's a guy who's really now, because he was the player coming from the bench, had to allow some of those veteran players to shine more and take the back seat, but now is his, is his opportunity to shine for himself. 32 points a game, not bad for his first three. Yep. And for Cooper, really the only guy who played consistent minutes all year last year and a returning starter, Chance Wicks. Chance Wicks, great talent, athletic kid, can really get downhill very good. Still needs to work on that jump shot, but he is the returning veteran player. So we'll see how his teammates respond to him and his leadership. I think in some ways, some similarities with these teams. They yeah. both talked about, we like to play fast, we like to play aggressive defense. So I think we're gonna see styles that should mesh pretty well here. Oh yeah, we always say in the boxing game, styles make fights. Here's an opportunity for both teams, especially early in the season, to really see where they're at but both teams will come out with their aggression, with their intensity, and just kind of see where their opponent meets them to see if maybe Hiawatha can get the upset tonight. But for Cooper, trying to maintain that home court sense of, of, of keeping their team together and making the opportunity for the win tonight. All right, it's the yeah. Wolves and the Hawks doing battle next. Season opener for Cooper here on CCX Sports. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Welcome back here to Cooper as we get our first look at the Hawks for this 23-24 season. And uh, a pretty decent opponent at Hiawatha coming over here to take them on. And I uh, was talking to their coaches, our coach uh, Conley from Hiawatha about, he said, you know, we, we just tried to schedule some bigger schools, just a mixture of people. And, and our attitude has is, is got to be, you know, we'll come and take on anybody and just, you know, maybe it's, maybe it'll go well, maybe it won't, but that's the only way to get better. You know, with a program is trying to emerge and then you have some competitive players on your team, you want to give them the opportunity to com compete against the best. And so for Coach Conley, that's what he's trying to accomplish, a new program, new vision for the future. He's got some competitive players in terms of, you know, Cam being a very, very high, highly competitive player. That's Cam Solomon. So, you know, giving his players an opportunity to showcase their talent. 
And we're underway. Hiawatha gets first possession. Jumper wouldn't go there for Dama Watkins. He'll get it back, though. And that one is well off target from Liban Dima. Just one senior starter for Hiawatha. That's Watkins. And for Cooper, just a couple. So generally fairly young talent on both these teams. See Hiawatha starting out the game in a 2-3 zone. Kind of a matchup. You know, being on the road, want to keep people in front of them and try to keep Cooper from getting into any kind of fast break opportunities early. Thrown ahead there to Webster after the Cooper turnover. Then he nearly lost it to Yusuf Hussein, and now they do. And Hussein will get a breakaway, but he missed it. Follow-up probably wouldn't go either there for Henderson. Pull-up jumper there is short from Solomon. Cooper looking to run it back and knocked away from the Hawks' uh, Emmanuel Carmo, who is a football stud. You see Solomon had 14 a year ago against Cooper, and Wicks had 10, but uh, not a ton of guys who played a lot of ball for either of these teams a year ago. Watkins, a nice rebound off the McPipe miss. This game is going to mirror what you see on the AAU circuit because players, as we see, oh, we got the foul there. It looks like Chance with the foul there. But you'll see, you know, there's no traditional center, okay? There's no tra traditional power forward. Mainly all the players that are playing are guards. So it's going to be an up and down game, a lot of trap and a lot of defensive uh, intensity on both ends. And that one banked in by Dima. First basket of the game for the Wolves there. I have to admit, I was a little surprised that it wasn't a shooting foul on that drive to the hoop there, but they uh, end up scoring shortly after the inbound, so Hiawatha draws first blood. Into Carmo. Kicks it across. And that one knocked down for three by Hussein, and Cooper goes into the lead. There's a deflection. Almost saved there, but Henderson's foot landing out just as he was saving that ball. Both teams going to probably present the same kind of de defensive effort as we see right here. Cooper knocking down an outside three point shot, which is a good sign being at home. But both teams going to do a lot of pressing, a lot of run and jump and try to force some turnovers so they can get some easy looks. Watkins with the miss there. Hussein pushing it back here for Cooper. Henderson was fouled as he made the catch near the high post. King James, the freshman, not a bad basketball name to have, yep. right? <laughs> yep, yep. You know, both teams really don't know each other, even though they have competed against each other. But with new players, uh, a lot of players that who have left and some new players emerging right now. So they're right now in these early stages, just trying to get a feel of each other. Yeah, and you run some of your, you know, your half-court sets and stuff in practice, and it's not quite the same as on game night. There's Carmo exploding to the hoop to score it. Carmo, he's an athlete now. Uh, he's a kid who can come in. I don't know if we're playing hockey or basketball as we see Cam Solomon knock down the open three-point shot. Cam Solomon is an excellent three-point shooter, very smooth player, plays, you know, doesn't really play outside of himself. And right here with, uh, with the Hawks, he's going to get enough looks to really get himself going early. Wicks, a little hesitation move. The pull-up jumper wouldn't go. And Henderson gets to the rebound. That one wouldn't fall for McPipe. It'll stay with Cooper, though, as uh, the Wolves unable to secure the defensive rebound again. Cooper kind of hit and miss early on here, but 5-5 uh, five, five our score. Each team's made a 2 and a 3. And you know, normally you can be patient on offense. That, oh my, that should have been a goaltend, it looked like. Great block by, yeah, by James, James yeah. but it seemed to me that was already up on the glass. Watkins shooting and hitting a three there for Hiawatha. There's Watkins. Hiawatha, they're going to put the ball up. You know, they really do a good job on the offseason, preparing and training and developing players. So. Look, for, look at Hiawatha. They're not going to, you know, back down. They're going to take their chances. Wicks had his layup attempt blocked. Watkins then missing, and James going to be called for an over the back there. Here's a look at this block again. Oh, 
I love the block, don't get me wrong, but I think it should have been a goal ten there. Yeah, you want to see it from both ends. I mean, both inside players for both teams, very athletic. I mean, these kids can really get up off the floor. Wicks giving it to Henderson. A little short shot wouldn't go. Carmo trying to keep it alive will be called for the foul as he came across Solomon's arm. That was the second foul, by the way, on King James on that uh, previous one. So a little early foul trouble. And Carmo looks like he's shaking up as he comes out. And subbing in for him will be Noah Lease, number 21. Cooper getting a chance to set up a little bit of pressure here. And near steal, but then a foul as McPipe wound up diving for the ball into the legs of Ludy Webster. Yeah, coach is going to have to do some coaching tonight because it's going to it's going to be close. I mean, both teams kind of match up the same way. They have the same kind of philosophy. Let's pressure on the defensive end, force some turnovers, give us some easy looks because both teams not traditionally don't have a lot of shooters other than maybe Cam Solomon on the Hiawatha end. So they're going to look to get after each other and force some turnovers. A little pick and roll action and a strong finish by Melvin Anderson there. And he's a, let's say, a position one, position two, and he even used a screen there to open himself up, give himself an opportunity for a, a bucket. And a foul there on that entry pass against Hiawatha. Got away with an illegal screen there. We had a pretty good look, and he, uh, but still a nice little pick and roll set. Solomon picked up that foul. Cooper inbounding on the baseline. They'll go to the corner to Wicks. Whoa, that one hits the side of the glass. And then Webster losing it on the way out. Save back in there. McPipe, the drive, and they get it to go. Early hoop here for Cooper's Wicks after McPipe coming up with the steal. You know, once again, just because you missed a shot doesn't mean you have to get back on defense. Both teams. They're going to try to gamble a little bit on outlet passes, things of that nature. So there's Wicks having an opportunity to get his first two buckets. Long on the free throw, but then a takeaway. The tip is good. Henderson will get credit for that one for the Hawks. And so and there you go. Within one. Yeah, you, you see there right there. You know, he had that opportunity to just get a rebound and get in the fast break, but. Sometimes those outlet passes get deflected, and you know both teams are going to be looking to use that opportunity to get scoring scoring chances. Inbounded here to Watkins, looking to Solomon popping out for three. Yeah, that's money. Cam, you let Cam get his feet set, and he likes to take the three-point shot. So Cooper going to have to do a better job locating him. There's John Connolly and Jesse Lewis, co-head coaches now for Hiawatha. John was the head coach and then Jesse, an assistant before that, but now co-head coaching. There was some situation with the substitution for Cooper. Noah Lease was sent back out of the game. Looks like he had his, still had his uh, chain on a little necklace, so they had to get an early sub for that. Wicks, a shot fake, and then he'll step in, pull up, wouldn't go. Carmo putting it up, no good. Carmo will get it back again, and he scores. Second basket for Emmanuel Carmo, and this is something Cooper's generally been good at. They're quick off the floor. They'll hit the offensive glass very hard no matter who they're playing. With the substitution of Jones, Cooper's now gotten big. So you got Carmo in there, and now you got Jones. So they got some size in there to kind of control that rebounding. Wicks with the steal. And then they're knocked away from him as well. There's a look at Bo Powell now in his ninth season over here at Cooper. And said, yeah, there's definitely some new players, new faces, but Said the sophomore and junior class have some ability, and as uh, you said, a little more size. Uh, Janiel Jones in there, as uh, Ariel said, about 6'7". Wicks got a piece of it. Solomon, though, gets it back and drains it. 
Yeah, doesn't take him long. He's got a quick switch. He could easily be at a 4A team playing on a high level, but, you know, just the kind of player who wants to play somewhere smaller so he can showcase his talent, and we're able to see it right there. Inside to Jones, and he gets the roll. They tried to draw the charge. Official wasn't buying it, and Janiel Jones hits the bucket. And then Jones will be called for the foul as Solomon made the catch. Coach Powell doesn't want Jones to make that kind of foul. He'd rather him just stay solid and get in position because with his size, that could pay dividends for Cooper as, as the game starts to develop because Hiawatha doesn't have the size. So Cooper looking to use that size that they have, try to control this game. Watkins the drive, no, and then knocked out of bounds by Cooper as Melvin Anderson was looking for the putback there for the Wolves. So Hiawatha still in the lead, 15-13. It has been, as expected, competitive. People getting after it. Some good shooting here and there, and some misses along the way, too, with tough D. You know, both teams are going to play hard with all these guards and this athleticism and this speed. Both teams are going to get after it. You just want to hope and pray that in getting after it, they can manufacture some good plays that will you know, allow them to get some scoring opportunities or at least control the game. McPipe dribbling it out to the left wing. They try to get a little pick and roll action. Lee steps in and too strong with that one. Eleven Duante Lowry in there now for Hiawatha as well. And was that pass tip? No, it was not. Just a turnover there. You know, Cam Solomon, he's going to get a lot of, you know, double teams, triple teams, because both teams are going to understand, all teams that play against him are going to understand he's their leading scorer, so they want to get the ball out of his hand. McPipe steps in but missed it. Dima, the rebound there for Hiawatha. Solomon looking to attack here. Wouldn't drop for him, though. And Lease out of the pack for Cooper, and he lays it in. Wow, pretty good end-to-end -end speed with the ball there for Noah Lease. So Cooper ties it up. If you're at home, you want to get some scoring opportunities, especially in the fast break, get the crowd in the game. Oh, Solomon buries another one. He has three threes already. I see why he's averaging over 30 a night. Yeah, he's got a clip. I watched it all summer. Had the, uh, you know, the fortune to coach him a lot. Uh, he's got a really sweet stroke. Um, D1 colleges, D2 colleges really recognizing his abilities. Jones missing, but he was pushed. You see Cam Solomon. You know, he's a player who really can score the basket. As we see Cooper in their fast break right here, Cooper going to need a little bit more of that from Lease, especially with the visitors with Cam Solomon. You know, he's a kid, you know, like Jackson Folks, you know, a guy who plays on Park Center. Quick touch, quick, you know, quick release. So you got to locate those guys because they can easily run off four or five, six in a row. Not, e not even a problem. Wicks coming back into the Cooper lineup, also in for the Hawks. Uh, Cornelius Irby, number 10. As Jones missing that first free throw. One more coming for the lefty. And that one off as well. Try to throw a double at Solomon, and there's Wicks with the steal. Gets it across, and Irby quickly gets his name in the scoring column as the turnover leads to a layup. Back out, Solomon will line it up again, and he hits another three. That's one guy you probably don't want to be leaving when they're, they're looking to throw some traps and doubles and things. That, that, that's a guy you probably need to stick with, though. Yeah, when he gives it up, you want to stay in denial. Watkins up with the steal, and he'll get the layup. His second bucket. So a turnaround is fair play there. Is uh, Iowatha creating a turnover and an easy two. Hiawatha sitting in that matchup 2-3, looking to extend it out to half court, trying to force Cooper into some turnovers. Nice pass, Carmo over to Lease, and he'll get it to go. Nice little big-to-big -big pass right there. Cooper trying to use that full court defense, try to create some turnovers, but right now Hiawatha doing a good job handling it. Watkins steps up and knocks down another as he's looked confident in these last couple shots. He has seven points. 
Six point lead now for Hiawatha, their biggest. Say what you want to say. Both teams, you know, offensively executing, you know, uh, when one team tries to pose some questions, the other team able to answer. Carmo the miss. He tried to get it back himself. Now Jones will hit the short jumper. You see Jones doing a good job. Down to the corner. Oh, and Jones gets a piece of that one. But left all alone for the layup is Dima. With this pressing, it's going to open up some opportunities for people to score. So both teams doing a good job, though, so far. Ooh, a nice drive all the way to the hole, and the layup's good for Irby as he has come in and made his presence felt. See, right now, Hiawatha, Cam Sullivan, got to locate him. Even if he gives up the ball, it doesn't mean I don't know where he is. As we see Cooper not, you know, getting caught up with the three-point shot, but also attacking on their own. Irby going to the line. Foul was on Dima. So a chance to finish a three-point play here for Irby. Oh. <laughs> Iowatha was in the lane way early there. They'll just count the free throw. <laughs> You know, they, they're not used to seeing that scenario. Referees are just like, okay, you stepped in. Go ahead and continue your shot. I don't know that I've ever really seen it yeah. quite like that where everybody just kind of <laughs> stopped and looked. But. All right. And now for Cooper, Anthony Jones, 23, he quickly comes up with the steal. I had to wicks. No good, but he was fouled. Good yeah. job by Cooper there. Down three right now, but going to continue to use that press to create opportunities to score there. They just got to finish. Well, and there is a, a, an indication, too, of what it helps to have some length on that pressure as Jones got his hand on that pass. Much harder to throw over a guy who's, uh, you know, 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, whatever. And You got Jones and Jones. So you got the Jones brothers in there with their length. That's going to, you know, right now it was probably a six-point lead. Now it's down to two. So Coach Powell looking to use some of that length on his press to create some turnovers. Wicks makes a pair of free throws there. He has four points, and Cooper's back to within one. Hey. Iowatha will inbound, and now in the backcourt, and first we're going to see McPipe subbing in. That pass tipped. They tried to throw it ahead and now Wicks. Lost a dribble there and was fouled as he got it back. Kind of got fortunate there as he had a little struggle trying to squeeze the ball there, but. Trying to go too fast a little bit, but you know, you're at home, take those chances. Well, that's going to be number three on Dimas. He picked up a couple in very short order there. And so bonus time here for Chance Wicks. No good on that free throw, so. Wolves have gone a little bit quiet offensively. Here's Solomon. Thought he was fouled as he had a fadeaway try there. And now a steal for Jones. McPipe going to stop and pop. That one is way off, though. Watkins coming back. His pass off a of Cooper leg as he tried to go across to King James with it. And it will be Hiawatha inbounding on the baseline. A lot of coaches track deflections, and Cooper's gotten an awful lot of them. Hiawatha, that's one thing. You know, you start thinking about what do we do different, maybe mm -hmm. pass fake a little bit. Right. Solomon trying to shoot it, and Wicks blocks it. They'll get another crack, though. Webster down the middle. Watkins. Pull up jumper there, and it's smooth again. Yeah, Watkins got a nice little mid-range game. I like his uh, his quickness, you know. Really deceptive there. And good footwork there where he yeah. powered up for that jumper. Yeah, I mean, he gets a lift. Strong. He gets off the floor, yeah. 
And a takeaway there by Watkins as McPipe tried to spin around him. Solomon, who I thought he was going to let it go. Watkins will step in and fire again. That time short, though, and wicks the rebound. Six minutes to go now in the first half. Cooper down by four. Oh, nice dish down low. Jones, though, just lost the handle. Anthony Jones was open. And a good idea with that one on the pass, but just kind of had it slip out of his grasp. There's Jalen Leibel, 22 now in for the Wolves. Really good no look there, and he had it, and it just plain slipped out. I mean, that'll happen sometimes. Yeah, especially when teams are pressing. Liable shooting. Jones got a piece of that. James, the putback try wouldn't go. Jones brothers doing a really good job on the defensive end, challenging shots, making it different for high, difficult for Hiawatha to score. Here's the rebound opportunity, but it wouldn't go for Denial Jones. And then James, the rebound here for Hiawatha. Wicks went for the steal, didn't get it. To the corner, and a three is put up and in by Leibel. Very impressed with Hiawatha, their shooting ability from the perimeter, especially the three-point. Already about six threes already they've made. That's about 18 points, nearly half their, their points that they've scored. Cross-court pass, didn't get there, a steal. Back out, Solomon's going to let it fly. This time no good. Wicks the rebound. Wicks. End to end speed there. It was deflected away and it'll stay with Cooper. There's Cam Solomon on the miss, but Chance Wicks looking to push. Excellent speed there, but good hands right there by Hiawatha. In it goes Anthony Jones. Good move inside, but couldn't quite finish it, and it'll be Hiawatha basketball. Cooper's kind of had the better of things inside, but they haven't finished quite as many as they'd like. Yeah, you don't see them, you know, really trying to run inside plays for their perimeter players. As we see once again, Hiawatha, Libel knocking down a three-point shot. That's what I was talking about, Jay. Hiawatha does a really good job on the offseason training and developing. And so right now with a new team and new players, Hiawatha, Really doing an excellent job on the road, just knocking down open shots. And you got to make people pay if they're yeah. going to gamble and go for steals and things too, and that's what they've been able to do a little bit better. Obviously, they've turned it over more than right. they'd like, right. but then they've also kind of settled down and gotten some good looks out of it. And yeah. So Coach Powell with that time out there, I'm sure he's saying, hey, guys, we got to get to shooters right now because that's already their eighth three-point shot. And if you've got a road team coming in, you're really not looking forward to them just, you know, knocking down three-point shots. And I think, too, it's a little bit, and it, what you talked about, them not knowing each other that well, it's recognizing, okay, which guys do I right. really need to worry about shooting that three, and which guys can we go attack a little bit and try and uh, spring a trap on them? You know, obviously, they talked about Cameron Solomon, Solomon so they really, you know, identified him. But now, you know, Hiawatha doing an excellent job. Some of the role players taking advantage and just knocking down open shots. Biggest lead of the night for either team here as Hiawatha has stretched it out to 10 after Cooper had made a run and gotten within four. Ever since, ever since the departure of Carmo, that's when the kind of the game's got some separation. So hopefully Cooper can get him in there because he was active early, making it difficult to make shots. Wicks way off with that one. James the rebound. Cooper has made one three, but they have not looked especially good from the perimeter. Here is Solomon lighting it up again. He has now made five threes himself in this first half. And all he does needs to do is get his feet set have that comfort of understanding his teammates are going to bring it to him. Lease attacking, wouldn't go. Rebound is up and in. Count it there for Anthony Jones. And this is the area where Cooper's kind of had the edge on the offensive glass. Much needed basket. Lease tries to drive. He goes strong in there, but Jones giving Cooper a second chance bucket. And when you're at home, you want your bigs to be able to do that. And not good news for the Wolves. That'll be the third foul on James. So 
Dima and James both with three fouls and they don't have quite as much size as Cooper anyway and now right. you lose two of your bigger guys. Right so they're going to go small Hiawatha you know forced to go small right now so it'll be interesting to see what kind of defense that Cooper plays against Hiawatha to try to you know cut into this lead that Hiawatha has built. Oh yeah. good look yeah, just a little too hard. Webster yep. trying to gather himself to go up and didn't look it in. It was a hard catch but it had to be thrown hard. Yep. McPite. And no good, but that'll be a foul on the shot as Hussein. That was one you hate to see if you're the defensive coach there as they were just late getting there and it wasn't a good contest. I, you know, there's some maybe that would have let that go because it was kind of after the shot, but still you don't want to run into a shooter out there. That's what Hussein likes to do. He likes to shoot, catch and shoot that three point shot. He's a, he's a sniper, he's a gun for hire. And whenever he comes into the game, he's looking to hunt and try to get him an opportunity to get that three point shot off. A lot of good trends for Hiawatha, but the foul situation, it could potentially hurt them in the second half. Yeah, 10 to four, and it'll make, it'll force them to even play even smaller, which will make or force someone else to have to step up and do something they're not comfortable with. Hussein gets two out of three at the line, so the lead is nine right now. Oh, and then Watkins lost it off his foot. Oh, and a travel call on Lee's. Good hustle, though. He dove on the floor and got it, and they ruled that he kind of advanced his body, mm -hmm. not really on purpose, but still, you love the hustle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to see him playing already down nine right here. Yeah, right when he turned himself over is yep. what, what led to that travel call. I think it was the right call. He didn't like it, but... Right. Solomon with Carmo out checking him now. Watkins whipping it down to Webster and then back to Watkins. Shot fake and he steps in, but he's got a nice game. Yeah, you know, he's a senior, savvy, you know, savvy veteran. Back to an 11 point lead now for Hiawatha. Hussein driving it in too strong with that one and bounces over to Solomon. Oh and there's a steal by Carmo. And let's see what we'll have for a call here. Looks like they're going to call a defensive foul even though uh, taking the worst of that I think was Anderson. Carmo. A thick looking dude out yeah. there, isn't he? <laughs> He's a big boy now. He's been that way. When I worked at Cooper High School, I got a chance to meet him and engage with him. But he's always been that size. I mean, he's a guy that all you need to do is get him in the weight room and he's going to blow up. Third foul on Anderson also. And I can kind of see why Hiawatha thought maybe that could have been on Carmo instead there. But And he's lucky there, Jay, because, uh, you know, he already had a couple of fouls, but you know, Coach Powell recognizing they need his energy and they need, you know, his aggression to kind of just buy, uh, to kind of build into his team so he can cut into this lead. Spins out, no good. Carmel getting one out of two. Watkins looking to attack was fouled. Carmel got a clean block, but he had already been uh, hacked on the way up. You can kind of see for the Hawks, you know, I would say Solomon and especially Watkins, they're their lead guys. They're going to look to create the game and make the game there. And so far doing a great job here on the road. Knocked out of bounds. Solomon, I think, is uh, going to be made to be a little uncomfortable. Carmo is out there on him now, and Solomon was complaining to the official he's holding me. And Solomon, is, uh, Carmo is going to try and make life difficult for him right now. And that will be an illegal screen moving pick. And they were trying to pick Carmo off. They sure were. They set him up, Coach uh, Lewis, set a little double screen for Cam Solomon to come off that baseline. Carmo had a hard time getting through that screen. But on the switch, an illegal screen was called there. And now ball back to, back to the Hawks. 
Two minutes to go, first half. Cooper down 10. Wicks whipping it over to Henderson. Oh, he missed it. Carmo's put back no good, but he gets the second one to go. Here we are trying to chip away at this, this lead here right before half. And there's a steal, a layup, and a foul as Lees will get two and a chance for a three-point play. Those are the kind of turnovers you hate as you not only do you lose the ball, but you give it to them in great scoring position also. And just two minutes ago, you had an 11-point lead. So you definitely want to secure that halftime that half lead. You don't want to give the, the home team any kind of easy looks there to cut into it. Lease way off with that, but Wicks gets it back and he scores. Wicks. And, ooh, Wicks running there. I don't know how he missed everyone. Kind of squeezed between the bench and the score table there. But now Cooper coming on strong. They're within four. They have all the momentum, even though they're trailing. And with the substitution of Carmo, all of a sudden this lead gets cut into because Carmo's presence on the basketball floor in the defensive end now matching up with their leading score. Down to the corner, and Libel will knock down his third three, and that was one of the things that really built that lead for Hiawatha in those corner threes. Now back to a seven-point game. Tried to go inside to Henderson. Off his hand, it'll be out of bounds, and it's Hiawatha ball. Again, though, the trend with all the fouls yep. has certainly been in Cooper's favor. Even though yep. they're the team trailing, yep. you feel like they might be in pretty good position in the second half. Yeah. Oh, Carmo with another foul. Let's That'll be see. his second. I oh, think. his second. Okay. Yeah. All right. So he should be in good. But like you were saying, on one end, maybe you're gambling a little bit, getting some fouls called, but it also creates a mentality. It creates a sense of we're going to be aggressive. So, you know, sometimes that works out for you there. Dribble picked up in the backcourt. I think they're going to use a timeout. They realized that Libel was in some trouble there. So Cooper starting to do some things better. I mean, for the most part, Hiawatha stayed calm and handled it pretty well. They still got a seven-point lead, right. which is good. But uh, you can see some of that pressure starting to really pay off again for Cooper and for some turnovers and also some of the second-chance points they've been yep. getting. They're starting to... I, I feel like without James in there right. to defensive rebound, Hiawatha is really having trouble keeping Cooper off the glass. Yeah, they, they're going to, so they're just hoping that whatever offensive attack they make, hopefully they can get a score, at least get an opportunity to get a good look because right now Cooper, both coaches really dialed in on to how we're going to close out this first half. Cooper looking to cut into that lead, Hiawatha looking to build on that lead and for sure keep some momentum coming into the second half. Wolves basketball in their backcourt. Anderson inbounding. Solomon getting a screen out high. Pretty good contest though by Wicks as he got back. And now they give it up to Chance Wicks. Layup is good. He can really run. Yeah, he's got some wheels. And so here we go, lead down now, down to five. Probably a quick shot by Cam Solomon right, Solomon right there, but, you know, Cooper looking to speed up, not looking to hold the ball, but trying to get an easy look there as Cam Chance Wicks scores the layup. So that's the seventh team foul, and Ludy Webster will come to the free throw line here for Hiawatha. The personal was on McPipe. And that time, kind of maybe an unnecessary one, because it looked like they had a pretty good trap put on, but he just kind of chopped across the arm, a little too obvious to let go. Right. Webster hitting the first free throw, and now Hussein will come in. And uh, McPipe, with those two fouls, I think a good substitution. You'd just as soon get yeah. to the halftime with him at two instead of three. He might come right back in offensively, perhaps, but 
But also Coach Powell, he's got his biggest players on the floor. Gets got some size. Just to try to, you know, make sure he can control that defensive end. So a seven point lead. Under 25 seconds to go in the first half. Down low to Henderson. He missed it. Jones gets it back and then is tied up. Held ball goes Hiawatha's way here. Solomon looking to attack. Now fade away, bounced off. Cooper trying to hurry up and get one more up. Wicks will stop and fire, and that one is short. And so we come to halftime of this one. Pretty good offense on the road here for Hiawatha as they will take a 45 to 38 lead into the halftime break. We'll have first half highlights and stats and then our second half of basketball here. Been a pretty good one so far here. Season opener for Cooper, Hiawatha coming on the road and showing up pretty well. CCX Media is the first place you go for local news and sports. But did you know you can sign up for those stories to go straight to your inbox on our website? Simply go to ccxmedia.org. Click on the subscribe button, and from there, choose which notifications you want to receive. Then we'll send your favorite CCX Media news, sports, and city events straight to your inbox. Sign up now at ccxmedia.org. Hiawatha Collegiate leading Cooper 45-38 at halftime of this one as we check out some highlights from the first half, an eventful first half, kind of a slow start offensively as the teams got into it, but then uh, got some things going after a while. There's Carmo, a nice kick out, and a three knock down there by Hussein early for Cooper. And a pretty good opening half there for that guy, Damo Watkins. Knocking down one of his five buckets in that first half. Cooper hitting the offensive glass and Carmo able to finish that one. Solomon heated up. The leader on in the half chased him off some shots, but uh, he was a, a certainly a big factor in that opening half. Cooper able to push it here and Lease takes it all the way in for the layup right there. He had three buckets off the bench. Solomon getting another open look here though and one of five threes in that first half for him. Cooper really made a push with the defensive plays late at the steal by Wicks and then the two inside for Irby. But Watkins was uh, clutch with some answers as well. Here's Irby driving and attacking there. Corner threes were a big deal for the Wolves too. Libel made three threes coming off the bench and helped his team. So you see Solomon did have 17 and Watkins with 11. And then as we said, Libel knocking down three threes. Wicks and Carmo, they've gotten their points in a little different way certainly than Hiawatha. The Hawks haven't really shot well from the outside. It's been more either layups off steals or hitting the offensive glass and uh, you know, some adjustments to be made both ways here, I think, coming in the second half. You know, both teams, let's say for uh, Cooper, need to chase some of these shooters off that three-point line and force them to put it on the deck and maybe attack the rim. Cooper does have some size, so if they can force those three-point shooters off the line and force them to dribble drives, maybe they can get some contested shots, some rebounds, and out in the fast break. Obviously, for Hiawatha, uh, being in some foul trouble with their size, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they do in the second half in terms of keeping their scoring opportunities alive and, and trying to uh, keep Co uh, Cooper from scoring as well in the defensive end. So we'll take a timeout here and come back with half number two as Chance Wicks and the Hawks try and battle back from a seven-point halftime deficit.
Welcome back here to Cooper High School. There's a look at the huddle of Hiawatha Collegiate as they come out with a seven point lead going into half number two. It is their fourth game of the year and just the first for Cooper. And at times it's looked like that, but at times they've looked pretty good. So like you might expect on opening night. Yeah, I mean, on opening night, you know, it's kind of like, uh, you know, hit or miss. But, you know, right now, got to feel good about where they're at, especially a team who's already played a few games and got gotten some reps underneath their belt. You know, Cooper got to feel good about where they're at right now. Looks like a moving screen early. No, I think it might be something to do with the clock. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Maybe it was the shot clock at issue or... Right. An adjustment for everyone, I'm sure, even for high school referees. I mean, that's something that they're foreign to, so... Right, and I have to admit that the few games I've seen early on, there have been fewer problems yeah. than I was expecting mm -hmm. with, mm -hmm. you know, uncertainty of when to reset it and all that kind of thing. So they've got the training down because I'm sure the people at the scorer's table, that's even, yes. you know. I know it, in a way it, it, it sounds simple that right. just you reset when it hits the rim and all that, but there's a lot of differences that can go into it. Right. Hussein missing. There's Henderson up for a nice board. Kick it back out. And that one no good. And out of bounds off Wicks. And the officials, Cooper trying to sell it as though it may be hit to Hiawatha also. The first official on the baseline had already called it Hiawatha ball, and Cooper trying to plead to the other one that maybe he saw it different. Solomon, again, Carmo is on him to begin this half. That one fired up there no good by Dima. Battle for it, and Carmo comes out of there with it. Here's Wicks for the layup. Wicks maybe probably got away. Oh, and one there, he almost had an opportunity, but good start for Cooper right now. Down to five. Back out, Solomon. Short with that one. I thought, felt like as the half went on, Cooper defended him a lot better. They, they weren't giving those open looks. They switched up Carmo just to give him a different look, and sometimes that you want to do. Carmo actually is a, you know, physical, so now that makes you, you know, kind of rethink how those opportunities are going to go. So let's see if it pays some dividends for Cooper in this second half. Floater by McPipe, no good. The tip by Carmo almost went. And then James out of there with it, but he traveled. He, there was a defender in the way, and he kind of slid to the side before he had put it on the court. I think that was a good call. You know, James doing a little complaining right now. He's anxious. He want, he's ready to score. Obviously, you can see high energy player. He's a big and, you know, so far hasn't been able to have the opportunity to put the ball in the basket. So you can see that wide open layup. He was going to dunk that and get himself going early. Swing it down to the corner, and there's Hussein burying a three, his second three of the night. Cooper to within two. And, and Coach Powell started Hussein in the second half right now, looking to take advantage of his three-point shot. This kid has, has not seen a three-pointer that he does not like, so he's going to be confident about letting that thing ride from the perimeter. Watkins, a turnaround there. It's short. And again, Cooper making them work harder than they had to at times in the first half for shots. Cooper down seven at halftime, now on a 5-0 run, looking to tie this game up. Here we go for the long attempt by Hussein. And then Watkins, uh oh James is injured. He might have hit his head on the floor. That hurt right there. You could hear the bump. Mm. And, and Cooper, I think, was, at first was saying, well, we kind of had the ball going the other way. But I think it just it was hard enough. And I guess he didn't hit his head on the floor. He might have gotten hit in the head. But it's, it's hard to. Looks like he hit the knee yeah, of Carmo. 
Hard to fault him for calling that dead when it looked like he might really be injured, I think so. And he's frustrated. He's frustrated too. They probably need to get him to the bench. Right now he's doing a lot of barking. That's not going to give him any results at the end. So right now probably an opportunity to let him calm down and get himself back together. Officials discussing. Hmm. It looks like there must have been a tech, perhaps a technical foul given somewhere along the way is. We got McPipe at the free throw line. Yeah, James got teed up, it looks like. Yeah, it might be another foul added to his uh, foul count, too. Yeah. So he needs to be careful. McPipe makes the first, and he has a chance to tie it here. Second one wouldn't go, but it'll be Cooper Ball as well. They are down yeah. by just one now. They have stormed out to start the second half. Yeah. Doing a good job. Hiawatha looking to stay in this matchup 2-3 zone. A little extended to my liking, especially with the lead, but they're going to look, try to get some deflections. Like that? Yep, <laughs> like that. And I think that was a premature whistle because that ball bounced off the referee and was still in play. So, But Hiawatha... You know, it's a game of runs. Sometimes you make your run. Sometimes you lose a little bit. But let's see if Hiawatha can put something together here. Hussein stepping left and fires no good. Out of bounds. Going to be last touch by Henderson as they fought for that rebound. So James very early in the half gets a little bit injured but also picks up his fourth foul. What I believe must have been a technical, which counts as a foul. And a scramble for the loose ball here. We're going to have a foul against Hiawatha. And this will be Anderson getting his fourth. I'll tell you what, dangerous time here for Hiawatha with James to the bench. Now they're a little bit smaller, right? And so now with Kuh, uh, I would say with uh, Carmo in the, in the lineup here, there's going to be a mismatch on the floor where Carmo could really take advantage and get him some easy layups. So Anderson with his fourth is going to be subbed in for by Lowry and they do not have a whole lot of size on the floor right now. That's where they're in that 2-3 zone looking to see if they can steal some possessions here. Wicks firing and he hits and Cooper surges into the lead. Just coming out of halftime making some small adjustments an unfortunate foul troubles for Hiawatha. And now King James is out. Solomon with the runner gets it and one. They kind of have succeeded in at least making him put it on the floor and not get those catch and shoot threes. And this time able to finish it. And a much needed basket here for Hiawatha with Cooper on a, I guess a 7-0 run right now. And Hiawatha able to manufacture something as Solomon their leading scorer. He's going to have to do more of that in the second half, Jay, especially with them being a little bit smaller. And there's going to be, you know, fewer opportunities to get good looks. So he's going to have to do something individually, something special to keep his team in this game. That was the third foul on Carmo. And whether he'd admit it or not, I think Solomon's not too disappointed to see Carmo going out of the game. <laughs> he's uh, kind of been up in his jersey here late in the first half and early in the second. Here's Wicks, a nice drive and yeah. finishes it strong. Yeah, there's a nice little up fake, dribble drive and a strong finish by Wicks. Wicks picking it up now a little bit, starting to get some scoring opportunities for himself. Oh, Watkins, a good move, but he couldn't quite get it to drop. Now Cooper coming back the other way. They're up by two. Hussein, and his pass knocked out of bounds. He was kind of off balance there as he drove in there. They're maybe a little bit fortunate to get it back. Yeah. Probably had a wide open layup, but Hussein, he likes to shoot that three, so he passed it up to make the extra pass. Coach Powell will let you know if there's something he doesn't like. Here's Wicks for an open three. Hiawatha didn't look like they were ready. I don't, I'm not sure what they were doing. The ball was inbounded, and they were kind of standing looking. Five-point lead for Cooper. Watkins had it knocked away, and Henderson was fouled by Watkins. And that is exactly what Cooper wanted there. Yeah, Coach Wick. Coach Lewis looking to get a timeout. Hopefully he's looking to get a timeout because Cooper's come out of this second half ready to play. Been executing on the offensive end as well as the defensive end. And just building this lead now. Actually a pretty good foul to take by Watkins there. Cooper might have had two at the other end. 
five point lead now for Cooper. What a turnaround after Hiawatha built the lead up to 11 later in the first half. Ooh, Lees with a good move, couldn't finish. Henderson though does on the putback. There's Henderson creeping in there for the offensive rebound and that's what you want to see. Players not just watching the ball for shots but also actually attacking the offensive rebound and giving the team a second chance point. And there's a three put up and in by Dima. So that was a hoop the Wolves certainly needed. They're still down four but after a drought and looking a little bit rattled they're able to get a calm collected three right there. Well, Coach Powell able to recognize that his team is a little winded. They made a fantastic run coming out of the second half now. So his teams use all their energy and effort to build this lead. And now, unfortunately, receiving a three-point shot from Dima, Coach Powell taking that time out, reset things, let players get a rest, and try to build up on this lead that he has. Start of the 23-24 season here for the Hawks as they actually uh, it was a little bit deeper into the time than most teams for getting that first game in. They'll be back home here starting Tri-Metro play uh, Tuesday when they host Columbia Heights and then uh, a pretty good rivalry developing as they'll play De La Salle after that. Yep, the D. Yeah, there's some pretty good basketball in the Tri-Metro. I've mm -hmm. seen Cooper moving into this league a couple of years ago, and um, you got team, you know, Columbia Heights has certainly had some good clubs of late, too, and and uh, certainly De La Salle has got the long-standing reputation as a, one of the better programs around. Yeah. Oh, yeah. McPipe bringing it up, and Webster will be called for the foul. I like McPipe right there. They, they were attacking us, Jay, from our vantage point. But you see how he cut him off. He was creating a space, a lane for that dribble drive, used his body. I, I, you know, I'm one of those spectators. I like to see the fundamentals. I like to see players, you know, uh, doing things that are conducive to winning. And uh, just, a, you know, heads up play right there for McPipe to earn that foul there. Webster. Hounding him again. Now Wicks, a yeah. blow by here, and he scores again. That was similar to the last move he had. Yeah, that's Wicks' game. Likes to get you on the perimeter, likes to jab you, use that foot speed, that quickness. You know, he goes from first gear to third gear, can back it down to first gear, and then get back into fourth. And here we see the answer from Solomon showing he's not just a jump shooter. Yep. And if I'm Cooper, I'm making Solomon put it on the floor because with that jump shot, he can definitely open up the game and open up a lead there. So you got to continue to make uh, Solomon take it to the basket. Illegal screen called there against Henderson. So Watch here. Wicks. Yeah. Great foot speed. Not worrying about anybody challenging inside, uh, inside as King James has gone to the bench. So now for Cooper players, if they can beat their man off the dribble, there's really no one to contest the shot. Solomon wanting a three here at short. And saved off a Cooper leg, so Hiawatha will get another opportunity. Inbounded to Watkins. He'll dish it back, and that three won't go. And again, it goes off a of Cooper leg, and Iwatha will get it again, I think, here. As Lowry unable to hit that three, but still a pretty good setup. So Coach Powell's going to come back with some size as he puts in the 11th grader Jones, the younger of the Jones brother, but he's going to use some length to Try to secure some of that rebounding there because as you can see, Hiawatha is going to put it up. But Cooper did a good job so far in the first half rebounding the basketball, but looking to continue that. And Solomon is fouled as he drives it down the baseline there. They kind of bailed him out. I mean, that was going to be a yeah. hard shot. Yeah, they had three players surrounding him. They did a good thing in surrounding him, trying to force the ball out of his hand. But Solomon just playing through the play and now earning himself a chance to, you know, get two from the free throw line. Lease 
picking that foul up. And most good scorers, that's kind of that hidden thing that you don't think about, but getting to the line. I mean, yeah. it's almost kind of like bonus points or whatever if you can you can uh, at really add up from being, you know, an 18-point scorer to a 25-point scorer if Absolutely. you can get to the line. Absolutely. And college coaches, they love to see the balance, you know, you having the ability to score from the perimeter, but they also like to see you dribble drive, earning some points, some chances at the free throw line. Hussein down to Carmo, who just checked back in, and there's Watkins with a steal. Watkins all the way for the layup. Watkins, a much needed steal and a much needed basket for Hiawatha. In the first half, they were able to get some steals and get out on the fast break, so this second half looking to repeat the same. So they fight back and tie it up after it looked like things weren't going their way for a while. Here's McPyatt, that's a two, but Cooper back in front. Watkins, another blow by here, but he missed it. Pushed ahead to Hussein. He will fire and hit. <laughs> you called it. <laughs> I tell you, this kid's been doing it for years. I mean, never seen a three-point shot. He doesn't like it. And his teammates are now recognizing it. Solomon yeah. open, and he'll bury the answer. Yeah, Solomon. Can't leave him open. Anything you do, I can do better. That's what Solomon's saying. Two-point Cooper lead. Just under 11 minutes to play as the action heats up again. Watkins with the steal as he got around Carmo to deflect that one away. Here's Solomon again. Short with the left hand, but right there to put it in is Dima. And timeout Cooper as Hiawatha again fights back to tie it up. Like the way both teams are playing, just they're competing, even like the way both teams are coaching as we see Cam Solomon with a, a left-hand attempt, but right there as Dima puts it back in. But, you know, both teams competing. I mean, they're not putting their head down when another team makes a three-point shot. Many times you see, you know, high school players, the other team makes a couple threes, they put their head down and they pout. But both teams getting the ball back out, getting it inbounds, and they're looking to attack it early. Some of what we have ahead for you on CCX Sports as the girls hockey next week as Champlain Park Coon Rapids hosting Osseo Park Center on Tuesday and then some uh, our first gymnastics meet of the year and girls basketball next Friday as Armstrong will be hosting Park Center and then uh, after that got some hockey action as Alexandria takes on YZ. Sixty one sixty one Hiawatha had built a good lead in the first half it was down to seven by halftime and then Cooper came out flying to begin the second they took the lead and it kind of looked like maybe they would run away a little bit but Hiawatha to their credit answering back as well runner by McPipe no good tip wouldn't go for Carmo now they'll get it back again Wicks scoop shot here and no good and the rebound grabbed by Dima. Ahead to Solomon. Stops, fires, and hits. He's kind of shown me something that he recognizes that they've not been giving him those open looks, and he's done some other good things on the drive. Yeah. That'll be a foul as Hussein drove it in there. Well, he's got the, he doesn't have a light, okay, for Hiawatha. His job is to go out there and to make points and produce points. So for, for, for Cam Solomon, I mean, that's what he does, and he's so far been just doing it really well. Out to Carmo at the top. Looking to attack, and no good with it. Jones, though, snares the rebound, but knocked away from him. Lowry will hand it over to Solomon, and now Dima will shoot. Ooh, it was halfway down, but rolls out. Wicks was fouled. Yeah, Wicks, if he sees a gap, he's looking to attack. He recognizes his speed. Once again, just playing at home, you can take chances like that. Lowry will pick up the foul. Lease comes back in, Janiel Jones out.
Cooper down by two as they get it to Carmo out on the edge. Hussein, a long three, and he buries it. Tell me, that kid right there, he can open up a game. He has no hesitation. And then when you look in his eye, he, he really believes he can shoot the basketball. And right now, with now four three-pointers, that's his job. Cooper back in front by one with that make by Hussein. Webster giving it over to Solomon. Floater wouldn't go on Carmo rebounds. Wicks will shoot it from the corner, no good. Knocked away briefly, but Solomon gets it back. Watkins, ooh, nice quick move. Yeah, I like that nice little bunny hop into a Euro step. And then Cooper throws it away. Trying to play too fast, but you know, the, so far the boy's been doing good here. Nice little three-point shot there by Hussein. Got to locate him around the line. As we see Cam Solomon with the pass ahead to Watkins, and Watkins with a nice little bunny hop finish. Wolves by one as they get the ball back after the Cooper turnover. Heat Watkins check. in and out there. They'll get it back. Watkins, let's see, going to be called for the travel. Looked like he kind of changed his mind at the last second. He was going to go up with it. This is the kind of game we're playing right now. You know, both teams, you know, playing a little too fast, but at the same time, both teams are playing too fast, so kind of evens out. Webster denying that inbound pass, knocks it away. Cooper will get it back. You talk oh. about teams like Hiawatha, Cooper. They love the idea of a shot clock because no more slowdown, no more team getting leads against them, and they can't, you know, a team will stall against them. No, you're forced to play the game, and you're forced to, you know, run your possession on offense. Iowatha coming with pressure. They've been mainly in a zone all night, although not just laying back, but still this is a little bit different as they're giving Cooper a little bit of their own medicine. Hussein gonna drive right down the middle and he scores. Boy, is he feeling it and not just from deep. Oh, he's taking it all the way to the rack there. And Hussein, not one of the, the taller players, but having the heart to do so. Webster wow. with the finish there. He hasn't wow. had many shot attempts tonight, but he took it strong there. One of the smallest guys on right. the floor, like you said about Hussein. All right, we see Webster just coast to coast and going into traffic and sees both bigs running to him, but you know, able to get that ball up there and give it a chance to go in. Gonna be number four on Carmo as well as he got into him with the body pretty good there. And you tell players, don't get so interested in blocking the shot, but get yourself in position to take charges. Webster missing the free throw, so the lead stays at one for Hiawatha. Here's Wicks. Yeah. Thought about the three, instead attacks and draws a foul. So you see Solomon run out there to challenge that three-point shot. But with that shot clock, you know, the idea of how you play defense has to change, and you have to respect anyone who's open on the three-point line because there's, the possessions are rising now. It's not like the possessions are lower, so you got to kind of run yourself out there and take a chance. Twenty-one now for Wicks as he ties it up at 67. One more to come. That was the third foul, by the way, on Watkins, so quite a few of their key guys have uh, yeah, James went out earlier with his fourth and Anderson as well. So Cooper back in front now with the two free throws by Wicks. 68-67. Watkins right down the middle. Oh, and it was blocked or knocked out of bounds. It looked like he kind of lost yeah. the handle on the way up, but they're kind of fortunate to get it back. I don't think it was really a block. It was more right. hit the backboard. From our end, he was a blur. I mean, he just got right down into that paint from this end, which is probably a mishandle. Man, that went up and in. So we see Dima now coming out this second half, giving seven points. So now all of a sudden, we got a one point lead by the, the visitors in Hiawatha. Here's Wicks back out to Carmo. Hussein's gonna let it rip again, this time short. 
And Carmo able to get the tie up. Somebody else had the rebound, and Carmo was like, I want that ball. And I don't know if you noticed too, Jay. When Hussein shot that ball, all nine players stood still <laughs> and just watched because he's such an excellent shooter. They were just anticipating the ball going in that when it missed, everybody reacted. But credit goes to Hussein for having that kind of respect for all players just kind of watch. Lee grabs oh. the rebound. Here's Wicks, a run out, lays it in. There's Wicks, that speed, that speed. Cooper back in front with that layup. This one, everything as good as advertised. Lee knocked it away from Watkins there. I'll tell you what, both of these teams may not be ranked, but this has been a fun ball game to commentate. There's a lot of action going on here. Both teams playing hard as we see Lee pushing the fast break for the pass ahead to Wicks. But just a lot of fun basketball. Kids playing hard. Watkins will inbound here for Hiawatha. Back out to Webster. Corner, here's another attempt from Dima, but not good. Cooper, a one-point lead, and they have the ball. McPipe had it denied by Webster, and then another tie-up. Cooper will get it back. Now James will come back in for Hiawatha. I figure at this point, what you know, no need to keep saving him anymore. He's right. got four fouls, but if he fouls out, he fouls out. You need him in there. Just might be the difference in, you know, getting your team a nice little lead. Hussein missing on the three. Henderson the rebound, though. Henderson will shoot a three of his own, short. Solomon the rebound, gonna be called for the travel. They were trying to tie him up and he was kind of pivoting, but too much, I guess. Timeout taken by Cooper here with 6.02 to go and the Hawks leading it by one. Like Cooper, you like the response they had when they fell down by 10. Didn't really panic, came back and then took the lead. But then at the same time, Hiawatha, when Cooper had that run early in the second half, it kind of had the feel of a game that they were going to take control of. But yeah. it hasn't been that way because Hiawatha's answered the bell. Yeah, you know, just, you know, there was a, and, and I always make the emphasis with this shot clock, which is different when you don't have a shot clock. The game is going to come back to you. If you just maintain your composure, the game will give you opportunities. Now, doesn't mean you may be necessarily cash in on those opportunities, but they will be there. And for Hiawatha, even though Cooper came out that second half and made their run and cut into that lead, Hiawatha did not, you know, put their heads down. They stayed steady and fast, and the opportunities came where the, we saw Cam Solomon driving to the basket, making some shots for his team, or even, uh, I would say, uh, Webster or even the likes of Watkins, you know, just staying solid, the opportunities will come. McPipe bringing it ahead to Wicks, again looking to drive it, handing it off though to Lease, and he will shoot a step back three. Maybe not the best one that they wanted there. Oops. And a foul as Watkins got tripped up. Lease will pick that one up. Yeah, at least wants that back. You know, it's hard to shoot that step back. He's going to get subbed there, but kid's been playing hard all ball game. Coach Powell tells him to take a seat right there. He's going to put him back in. Just wants to give him a chance to reset, get refocused as they try to close this game. Webster will hand it off to Solomon, in and out on a three. And now Hussein running it back. Too strong with that one. James grabs the rebound and going to be out of bounds off of Wicks. He's pleading his case there. To be honest, it seemed like one that they maybe didn't see it real well. So it's like, eh, I think it's Hiawatha's ball. All right. 
Advantage home team. Webster is going to fire up a three, wow. and he hits. Wow. Once again, a little unconventional. I mean, there was no even first pass. He just kind of read the screen and roll, and, you know, had a feeling. Two-point lead for Hiawatha. Webster hounding, and then going to be Hiawatha ball. It's amazing when you make your shot, all of a sudden, as we see Webster, on defense they're really getting after it. but it was that three-point shot that gave him confidence to really put some pressure up there with McPipe and now giving his team an opportunity to get possession. Yeah the ball hitting the leg as yeah. he tried to save it. There's McPipe trying yep. to turn the tables but he saved it as he was going out. I'll tell you what once again both teams giving no room to the other team. I mean all of a sudden a possession a misfortune they come right back with the same aggression. I think the team's going to be, in particular, Hiawatha, they're going to be reminded that they're coming after every pass. You, you come and meet it, expect to be hit a little bit. That's right. you got to be strong with the ball. That's right, Jay. Uh, you know, there is, no one's giving you anything out here, and when their pass is made, you got to have to come and meet it. Solomon steps up and hits that baseline jumper. That's where that size he's got. He can rise up and yeah. still score over a defender there. Yeah, Cam. He gets lift off the ground. He's got really good shooting technique. One of the things we talked about all summer is working on him going to the right side. He does a lot of things going left, but being an 11th grader, he's got time. Carmo had that one slip out of his hands, and there is a block by Henderson. Henderson screaming in the face, getting that block shot there. But they're going to need some more stops here. Let's see Webster as we see. Watkins yeah. denied there. Mm -hmm. Now it comes into James looking to spin at Carmo. No good, but it's going to be a foul on Emmanuel Carmo. That'll be his fifth. James is determined right there. As soon as he got it, he didn't look left or right. He just went into his post move. And, and if Hiawatha can get him going late, especially in the low post, might be enough for them to get an edge where they can get a victory tonight. Carmo. Fouling out on that play as James will get set to shoot. Obviously, they've got a little bit of time to sub for him and will now do so. So James, who has not scored tonight, been in foul trouble, and then he got that technical on, um, I think it appeared complaining after he got knocked down. Yeah. They stopped the game for an injury, but then it, uh, it seemed as though he must have been called for uh, voicing his displeasure that it wasn't a foul. Yeah. So now he's just looking to get himself in the scorebook. Uh-oh. As they gave the ball to James, a late move up to the lane by Lease. And missing that one, but it's out off of Cooper. They had two guys going for it. So Hiawatha will get another possession, leading it by four. Watkins wants that pull up Love and he that. hits. Love it. Love it. Love it. Very seldom that you see players really with that mid-range game, especially off the dribble. So I'm all, always a big fan of seeing young players add that to their game, not just shooting three-point shots. Oh, a dangerous pass there and taken away. Now they throw it up for Watkins and taken right back. Here comes Wicks. All the way on the drive, wouldn't go though. Webster, they'll push it the, uh, back the other way, and it's going to be a double dribble. No basket there, obviously, as in the as they were making their way back up fourth, the trail official called the double dribble. James had a wide open dunk. Yeah, you they know. Drew, right there, <laughs> Webster. Yeah, they took it, took it away from a young guy. Can't get a can't get a break there. So Cooper now will find themselves trailing again by six. Still plenty of time, but they're going to have to be more efficient than they've been of late on offense. Hussein, left-hand floater, tough shot. 
Henderson though grabs the rebound he missed it and then it's Watkins out of there for the Wolves. Solomon a shot fake travel. Timeout taken by Hiawatha here. 313 to go and a six point lead for the visiting Wolves from Hiawatha Collegiate. Coach yeah. Lewis just he can sense the victory. So here with the timeout being a little adamant with the referees did you know was displeased with that travel call right there with Solomon there. But uh, right now got to keep his composure. Right now it's a little tight and you're on the road. I know it's easier said than done, but you got to have a short memory out there. Yeah. If, if you didn't like the call that went in, yeah. don't don't bring it to the other end with you. Yeah. And that's just everybody on both teams. Yeah, you know. I have to say, from my vantage point, I didn't really see it as a travel right. either, but sometimes right. they'll call that. Right. And let's see, this is going to be Hiawatha ball. Hussein going down, and it might have gone off his leg, I guess, as uh, Cooper turning it over. As the coach Lewis goes, ball don't lie. So that's one of those things where coaches, when we're displeased with a the call, then all of a sudden there's a deflection, and the ball comes back our way. You feel like, it, you know, karma gave the ball back to you. Wicks knocked that first pass down. Now Watkins. Yeah. A uh -oh. foul away from the ball, it looks like. Even screen, possibly. Yeah, I think you're right. That's going to be against uh, Dima, be his fourth. Interesting, because the ball wasn't being entered really anywhere near there or anything. Kind of an unnecessary one. I didn't really see it, but. Lees back out with it to McPipe. Under three minutes to go. Ooh, almost traveled there. Wicks whipping it down low. Hussein then back out to McPipe, and he buries a three. Much needed basket there, and I love the composure by Hussein. Probably could have threw up a shot in the paint, but had his eyes up and found the perimeter player. McPipe able to knock down that open three. Solomon not going to hesitate, but too long with it. James grabs the rebound and scores. Not a bad time for his very first basket of the game. Might be the difference. Hussein pull up here too long. Henderson the rebound back out. McPipe wants another three this time. No and James soaring for the rebound. Cooper down by five as we approach two minutes and here's where the shot clock comes in. That's right. You, they have to keep playing. No good there but James up for the rebound then had a block but he was fouled. And here's James frustrated the entire game. But the last five minutes has given his team a lift with his rebounding, with his defensive presence as we see McPipe with the open three-point shot for the Cooper Hawks. But on the other end for Hiawatha, James keeping his team alive. Unfortunate sometimes during the first half, but now got himself refocused and able to help build this lead. And after missing a couple earlier, he makes that free throw. You can see his confidence growing. It's always hard, no matter yeah. what age you are, when you get in foul trouble, it just disrupts your rhythm to come back in and, and play effectively. And he's only a ninth grader, too. Absolutely, and a young player. Obviously, you can see his passion. and So able to control himself enough, and I'm sure at the end of this game, if they can pull it out, Coach Lewis will give him player of the game just for these last five minutes and, and really adding some good contributions to the end. Six point deficit for the Hawks. McPipe. They don't really need to be thinking three yet. I mean, if it presents itself, yes. But inside and unable to finish it was Janiel Jones. And that was a big miss and a big defensive rebound for Hiawatha. Now, a minute and a half, they're up six. Webster will give it out to Solomon. Steps in. Oh, in and out. And it will be Cooper basketball with a minute 21 to play. So you remember in the old days, Jay, you could go into a four corners, 
and kind of stall it out and wait for some fouls. But nowadays with that shot clock, there's at least six or seven more possessions out here on the floor. And so we'll see if the Hawks can maintain. Wicks goes to the hoop. No good, but he was fouled. I don't think it's going to be on James, which would be his fifth. Let's see who they get, though. Oh, it is going to be on James. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, he was definitely. Okay. So that'll be his fifth. And he made some important contributions on the stretch. Obviously, he didn't play as much as he was hoping coming in, but Wicks to the free throw line. Boy, Cooper would have really loved to get this, you know, that hoop to go in. Yeah. But. And misses there. Wicks has had a good second half, but in that instance, not quite able to get the free throw to go. And free throw number two does fall. So a five point game, timeout taken. So we'll see five point lead for Cooper. Coach Powell, full court man to man, back into half court man to man, a lot of pressure with a five point lead. Let's see if he maybe switches up some kind of defense, maybe come out with the zone, try to identify for sure Cam Solomon. Want to figure out where he is. Of course, always. Uh, players like I would say uh, Watkins want to know where he is. So let's see what he discusses in this timeout when they come out here. Let's see if they can execute on the defensive end. Hi, Watha. We talked about the shot clock, and uh, you know I would still argue that maybe they shot a little too quick on the last two times they had the ball. I mean it was actually a really pretty good look by Solomon, but the the one before that felt a little bit forced and. Um, you know, obviously you can't stall out the rest of the game, but you can still try and use most of that 35, which they really didn't do at all. That's right. That's right. I just think for Hiawatha sometimes when Solomon gets an open look, they say, hey, man, you yeah. might have to take it because we might not get these looks. So, Absolutely. You know. I thought I agree. The second one, the one that he took, I was mm -hmm. very much okay with. The first one, though, felt, felt rushed. A little rushed, yeah. See if Cooper can force a turnover here. They get it into Solomon. Wicks defending him. Does a pretty good job getting that one into the front court. And then a little crossover move. Ooh, we got some contact. But then the putback is good by Dima. Dima's been doing a good job. He recognizes the situation. When he sees Solomon driving, he's always looking for that gap, that hole, that little crack where he can get in there and get a second chance point there. Sometimes. I thought that should have been a foul really yeah. on Wicks there, but sometimes guys just the ball finds them and that looks like Dima right now, yeah, right? That's right. It's been that kind of that way for the second half, but sometimes when you just make the effort, when you just have it in your mind that I'm going to do something extra, something to help the team, the ball just finds you. It just finds you because you have that good energy. And I always tell players the ball has energy as well. So if you have positive energy, that ball will find you. And you talked about earlier about guys kind of stopping and watching. And right. he, 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 even a good teammate like Solomon, you still think, I'm going to go get it if he right. misses. He right. may not miss, but it, nothing hurt if I get in good position either way. And I tell you what, when he's driving, particularly a player of his stature who has that reputation, when the other team sees him driving, you know they're, they're, they're fearful that he's going to make the shot. So if I'm on his team, I'm thinking, what if he doesn't make it? Because I guarantee you there's going to be players around him where there'll be an opportunity for me to just get an open look. And that's exactly what uh, Dima did. Again, Cooper still has time, but boy, they don't have much margin for error anymore. Down seven with 57 seconds to go. And Hiawatha not going to let him bring it up court easily here anyway. They're just a little token man to man, but trying to make him use time here as much as anything. Webster oh, reaches in and is called for the foul. That'll be the 10th team foul, so McPipe will shoot a pair. And that's what you don't want. And I'm sure Coach Lewis said, guys, keep people in front of you. Don't be too greedy. Allow them. They're going to bring the ball to you because they're down. Just stay, you know, stay solid. Have your hands out. So Webster, an unfortunate foul here, but I'm sure he's hoping that McPipe will miss. He does not on the first one. 
Yeah, that's exactly what Cooper would like there. Score with the, the, uh, with the clock, clock stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lease coming back in here for Cooper. Of course, another make, besides being a point, would give them a little bit easier chance to set up their pressure, too. Yes, sir. And he does get a pair. Big free throws there by McPipe. Back to a five-point game now. Dima, not really the guy they want handling it there. Webster, though, gets it up. And back out as Watkins comes to get it. Time a factor here. Watkins driving it. Oh, and he left it short. Jones the rebound. Here comes Wicks. He'll stop and fire a three. That one's off. They get it back, though. McPipe back out, and Jones going to step in and shoot and hit. Denial Jones buries it. Three-point game now. 16 seconds to go. So you see quick shot there. He's Jones with his... I believe that's his first basket of the game. Second, he's got six points. Okay. But late in the game right there. Trying to keep his team in this game. And I, I think it's a good recognition there that, you know, you're down five, so you you don't need a three right. there. Right. That, that second opportunity that came, you, you just, you know, no hesitation. You just got to take it and, mm -hmm. and hopefully in their sake make it, and he did. Right. So now you're talking about a press. You're hoping saying hey let's look for the steal but let's not foul too early obviously we don't want to foul cam solomon because he's a good free throw shooter don't want to foul watkins live has been quiet but we'll see they're not in the double bonus yet they are okay. in the bonus but still one and one for now right watkins is going to be grabbed there by lee says that was a smart thing for him with this late in the game just come and wait for him to foul you don't there's nothing else that you really needed to do there. Just gotta be careful there with that foul though when you put two hands around and that's sometimes that high school players are making that adjustment to now in the NBA it's understood but you know sometimes in high school referee can call an intention. Oh he missed it but Dima gets it back and they'll have to foul again. Watkins is fouled there by Henderson. Kind of an unfortunate bounce for Cooper there. Is the free throw miss but Hiawatha gets it right back. It's just an Achilles heel for a coach. You're saying they're shooting. We have the numbers on the rebound. We should be able to rebound that ball, and particularly with Jones. You know, coach Powell's going to coach him up a little bit because that was certainly a big possession there that they needed. Still a one and one. Ninth team foul there. And this time Watkins hits a big one to make it a four point lead. Only 7.8 to go. That was clutch for Watkins. And he makes a pair back to a five point lead now. Wicks coming down, fires a three, no good. And they're going to run out of time here, tie up, and I think that'll be game. And Hiawatha wins at 83-78, and they are pumped up to get a road win in what's usually a pretty tough place for visitors to come in and get one as they spoil Cooper's season opener here with an 83-78 win. Uh, as you said earlier, an entertaining ball game. Not a lot of people necessarily talking about these two teams coming into the year, but... Uh, they, did, they had a heck of a night here tonight and a, a good battle and a good road win for uh, Hiawatha, certainly, here tonight. Yeah, you know, Hiawatha, uh, what, what, what you enjoyed, especially with a team like Cooper who has a reputation uh, for being a very competitive team, what you want to do is come in their gym and get an upset. So uh, I'm sure right now Coach Lewis very proud of his team. For Coach Powell, something to build on, something to talk about. Both teams kind of evenly matched. But as they prepare for their next game, he's got some video, he's got some tape where he can help his young team understand what it takes to win a basketball game. 30 for Solomon here tonight, 19 for Watkins, including clutch free throws at the end. 25 for Chance Wicks to lead the way for Cooper, 16 for Hussein. Hope you've enjoyed this one here tonight. I hope we have some more like this all season long. It is Hiawatha edging Cooper 
83 to 78 for Ariel McDonald and the rest of our crew. MJ Wilcox. Good night from Cooper.